Hey, right, doing the Lord's work, Father. Keep it up. The advice you give us is worth more than money. It's worth my weight in gold. It's such a pleasure to speak to you because I think that you're you're the Dalai Lama of relationships. I'm not paying anybody's student loans off. I'm not paying anybody's car payments. Damn straight, Tom. Preach it. As soon as they get comfortable and they've got your balls, it's over, man. You might as well make huevos rancheros every Sunday for the whole block. The reason I called is that I just heard what happened to Paul McCartney. Very well deserved. You think she deserves the money, or you think he deserves uh, what happened to him because he was stupid and didn't get a prenup? Uh, actually, I don't know if they do air your show out in England, but if they do, and he hasn't been listening, dude, you need to get a way to find Tom like his hey. You see, it takes stories like this for guys to understand why getting married is no good for you. And you don't have to have $48.7 million uh, because it, 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 the amount is a lot. Whatever a lot is to you, that's what they'll take. You know what? I would rather be dirt poor, eating out of a garbage can behind some store than putting up with some effing C with a thumb <laughs> trying to take my money no matter how little I have. You are dead on when you when you talk about women being dream killers. Because as somebody who uh, I almost bit the bullet, you know, I'm, I've only been listening to your show for about a month. I'm, I used to live in Southern California. I knew of you, but I used to think that you were just this, this big jerk who didn't understand women and just wanted to be miserable. Coming more and more now to see that you're just dead on. Come talk, come talk, come talk tonight. Hello? Yes, hello. Who's this? This is Naya, her sister. Oh, hi. How old are you? Six. You're six. What is your opinion? I don't like how you talk about women because it's not really nice. And some men can get women that are fat. Yeah, but uh, who would want them? That's what I say. Come on, wait. All right. So you, no, should, you should listen to your dad. He knows what he's talking about. No, he does not. Everybody knows who I am and what I am, including uh, everybody listening right now. And everybody still wants to sleep with you, right? Yes, they do. Well, here's one person that doesn't. I have to say, you're doing a fantastic job, Tom. And two years ago, I was engaged, and my ex fiance told me to listen to your show. And once I listened to your show, I ended it. I'm like, there is no reason to get married at 20 years old. That's so right. I thank you so much, and I'm so glad, and you have a listener for life. I wanted to make a comment about the uh, when it's appropriate to give a uh, woman a compliment. It's only appropriate to give her a compliment if you could give the same compliment to a man. Like, wow, that's the fastest I've ever seen anybody change a tire or something. Like that. <laughs> you know, it, it has to be a generic situation. If you give them, wow, you look great today, what they heard is, hey, he's buying me a wedding ring. <laughs> <laughs> There are some girls, you know, that are pretty immature, you know, like 18 years old. I think I'll call, you know, 22 years old. Uh, yeah. Immature is okay, as long as they shut up and put their left leg of the 10 on the right leg of the 2. <laughs> yep. Now, how would you say dump that bitch in Chinese? Well, there's no literal translation, of course, but uh, I guess you might say something like, uh, what would that mean, literally? That would be, uh, well, uh, see, that's kind of like a word for a slut. So it would be like, uh, take that slut and throw her in the trash. <laughs> throw, throw her out. From a secret location in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I just uh, go with the flow. I go with the goddamn flow. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 
866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio with wide open telephones on this Friday at 1-800-5800-TOM. Anything goes here at one 800 800 8 Six six. Oh, it's Good Friday. So celebrate your Good Friday by yeah, celebrate. That's right by getting on the air with me, Tom Likas, at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. If you're calling from one of the inferior other countries out there, uh, we have an international telephone number, and uh, of course our country code here in the U.S. of A. is one. We invented the telephone. We're number one, so we are one. Okay. Our dollar is not number one, but uh, we're number one. So it's country code one, area code 323-520-6211. If you're outside the United States and listening to us on the Internet, anywhere outside the United States, call us at 1-323-520-6211. We did a whole show with international callers uh, recently, and it was amazing. We had Kenya. We had Beijing, China. We had Canada. We had a bunch of places. It's pretty good. Let's go to your calls here. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Roland, on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Roland. So uh, I'm a big fan of yours, Tom, and I listen a lot. And here's the thing: I'm a Poindexter by trade, but not in personality. Meaning, I've got a decent paying job. I went to college and all that. But here's the thing. I find that you were talking to some guy who, whatever, wasn't getting anywhere in his career, and you told him, look, you got to go network, you got to do this. And I said, holy crap, even though I've got a good-paying job, I can actually learn from this. So the thing is, you, you're a success now. So what, but I'm, I'm curious about some of the struggles and hurdles that you had to go through back when you were starting out that I can learn from. Well, the number one was that I didn't know anybody. And that's why networking is so important. To succeed in a chosen field, you've got to know people who do what you want to do for a living. And there are various ways to accomplish that. One is most businesses have a convention of some kind or seminars where people in the business get together. And by the way, it's largely a way for the married guys in the industry to get away from their wives for a few nights and drink heavily and, and sometimes screw around. And that's everything from the radio business to the supermarket business. It's everything. Okay, so what, what what is it you wanted to get into? Well, I'm actually I'm in the uh, IT industry, which is why I'm a point director by trade. I'm trying to get into entertainment, so I can definitely see where networking is going to help me. It's critical. Right. Uh, if you don't know anyone in the business, you can't make it. My biggest break in the radio business was getting a nationally syndicated show. And the way I got a nationally syndicated show was twofold. One, I went to the broadcasting convention every year. And all of the people who I could meet, I took their business cards. I kept in touch with them. And on top of that, I had a meeting one time for drinks with a fellow named Mel Carmazin, who now runs Sirius Satellite Radio. But at that time, he was running Infinity Broadcasting. I was not working for Infinity Broadcasting, uh, but Infinity Broadcasting later on took over the management of the Westwood One Radio Network. And after spending an evening with Mel Carmazin, he knew my face. He knew my name. And later on, when Westwood One was casting about for new shows, uh, he remembered me and my agent reminded him of who I was. And suddenly I found myself with a nationally syndicated radio show. So this was before you were the Tom Likas. Well, this is before I was the syndicated radio Tom Likas. I mean, I've been on the radio in L.A. for the, since 20 years ago, mm -hmm. this summer. Right. Okay? So it's been 20 years. But uh, I, I, I always went out and met as many people as I could. This goes back to when I was first starting out in radio. I didn't know anything about radio. I liked listening to the radio like you do. I didn't know anything about it. How does it work? What do people do? How do you press those buttons? I didn't know any of that. So I called the radio station. I was 14 years old, 15 years old. And I said, do you mind if I come down and watch you at the radio station? Most of them didn't uh, accommodate me or to put me on hold and never came back, whatever. 
But uh, there were people who said, sure, come on down, kid, come on down. And I did it. Came down, hung out, asked them how editing works, asked them how uh, how they time everything out so perfectly. How does that work? I learned about back timing. I learned about timing. I learned about all kinds of things that were important, but I learned it, you know, I didn't learn it going to school. Right. I learned it by meeting people. To this day, I, I am probably, and the people in the radio business know this about me, I am wired in more than most people. I, I find out about rumors. I find out about things that are going down in the industry. I actually know about them before most people do, and that's because I know so many people. My phone rings all day. And your phone, whatever business you want to get in, you've got to get your phone ringing all day. You've got to call people just say, hey, what's going on, and feel comfortable making that call, knowing that you're just trying to soak information up from people. Uh, you've got to feel comfortable just making a call where you really have nothing to say, to get them to talk to you, to get them to know your name, to get them to have lunch with you or a drink with you. It's all critical. Just to talk and learn. It's more important than going to school is having the ability to network with other people. And by the way, I don't trust these websites like LinkedIn or uh, any of these other business websites. These are for people who are afraid of actually meeting people physically or talking to them. Now, when you were when you were networking earlier on, you didn't feel concerned that someone felt like they were going to, you know, that you were trying to get something out of them or... Oh, I, 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 you can't be concerned about that. And some will feel that way. So what? Okay. Rejection is part of success. Remember, if you have any talent to do anything, the minute you meet somebody with talent, they're going to feel threatened by you. And some of them will try to discourage you from trying to do what you're trying to do. You have to ignore that. All right. That means you've got to have very high self-esteem. You've got to have a, you've got to develop a thick skin. Be prepared. Your family will tell you you're doing the wrong thing. Your friends will tell you tell you you're doing the wrong thing. And people you love will tell you you're crazy. If you're not able to say I don't care what you think I'm doing this, you will fail. There are people in my own family to this day who don't talk to me. People will be afraid that you will accomplish more than they will. Yeah, I try not to worry about them so much. Well, if you, the minute you do, you're dead. Well, Tom, um, I, I may call you back some other day for, for some more advice, but I, I am a college-educated educated guy, and I've got a really good job, so it's not just the so-called losers that can learn from you. Well, that's certainly true because uh, you know I also have had a modicum of success. Just a little bit, yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> Listen, uh, thanks very much, and if you could take me out with a couple of gracias, I'll appreciate it. All right, Roland, here you go. Gracias, gracias. There he is. <laughs> Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. It makes me sick to my stomach the way they worship you. It's ridiculous. It's like you're some sort of god or something, and you've got your own little Bible going on. It's the Tom Likas Show. Powered by H&R Block, you got people. It's the Tom Likas Show of Wide Open Telephones. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Christian on the Tom Likas hey, Show. Up, Tom? Not much. Uh, well, uh, first time, long time, man. Man. Yeah. Hey, uh, this is way out there, but I just wanted to know what you thought about the end of the world coming in 2012, uh, December 21st. Uh, who said that? Uh, well, the Mayan calendar runs out, and uh, I don't know. I always watch those History Channels and Discovery Channel, and Nostradamus predicted it, and in, in the Bible Code predicted it. Ho hum! <laughs> I tell you what, uh, you might as well give me all your worldly possessions then. Yeah, that's what everybody says when I tell them that. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just give me everything. <laughs> all right. All right. The right deed to your home. Here. Yeah, just bring the deed to your home. Do you do you own a house? Uh, no, I rent. You rent. Uh, yeah. What do you have of value? Uh, I got a, I got a new Audi. 
new Audi, which will be, you know, four years old by then, but right. maybe you'll trade it up by then. I mean, I most likely Might will. as well, since you'll never have to make all the payments, right? Right. That's the plan. All right. Uh, I want to take a little trip with you. We're going to visit uh, a trust attorney, you and I. I want to write your will. I want you to will everything to me. Done deal. Since you've got nothing to lose. You're the professor. If I'm going to sign over to anyone, it's going to you, baby. That's right. Why sign it over to the Crystal Cathedral or Liberty University when you could be signing it over to me? <laughs> True. True that. Yes. Have you ever watched those religious shows on Sunday morning and they tell you to, you know, leave uh, all of your worldly possessions to them? Right. No. Leave them to your professor. Will will do. Since the world is is will do. I used to work with him, by the way. He uh he, he and I did mornings in Rochester, New York. Really? Yeah. Will do. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes. Uh, leave all of it to your professor, um, because uh, let's face it, uh, you've got nothing to lose. So you, you you pretty much don't buy that. Is that what I'm not getting? even not even a little bit. Right. I mean, I know people have predicted that always. I just. It's oh, it seems like it's always on History Channel lately, and I'm, I don't know. But this like, has been this has been back in my head ever since I was a child. People have been saying the world is about to end. So what? Right. I mean, in relation to what? You know, the the Earth is so old; it's going to end someday. Uh, someday it'll fall apart. That's true. You know, we just need a few more decades, and we're done here anyway. Right. After that, who cares? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right. If it ends, it ends. Right on. Hey, um, can you take me out, Kobe? Yes, I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Doug on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom. Doug. So cool to talk to you. I've been trying to get a hold of you to talk to you about this idea I have. That you have. Yes. Uh, I've been a designer for years, and uh, I heard you talking about the uh, the personal fire protection you can get through, um, through um, like, uh, private fire. fire uh, it's through insurance companies. I think uh, AIG is one of the insurance companies that offers concierge fire service. There you go. That's what I heard you talking about that a while back. And I've got an idea for a um, fire prevention for houses for for blowing embers. You know what I mean? It happens every year during the Santa Anas. We get these fires that these idiots set. Right. And um, most of the damage is done by um, blowing embers, not by fire coming right up to the house because they have their setbacks and stuff where it's all clear. But their houses still catch on fire. Right. Well, I've got this awesome invention idea. And I'm looking for some financial backing. I could tell you a little more. A little more a why, why haven't you been to the bank? Uh, I just uh, you have uh, credit problems from an ex-wife. Uh, no, uh, no, 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 no. See, if you've got credit problems, I can't go into business with you. Uh, if you heard the idea. I, it could I've be the got... greatest idea in the world. But if you've got credit problems, I can't go into business with you. Uh, I can't do it. I have all, I have said I would never marry or move in with anyone who has credit problems. I understand that. Minimum FICO fine. score 700. Other than that, I'm out. Well, I'll check and see what my FICO is now. It's, it's, well, it's if, it, if it's 700, go to the bank, borrow money. Yeah. Tell the bank okay. about your idea. Okay, I think you'd be interested in purchasing it too for your your house. You, you well, once to... once you've got it uh, copyrighted and once you've got yeah. the money to actually provide the product or service, right? Be sure to send a brochure. But in the meantime, uh, I I stay to businesses I know something about, which is, okay. I'm in the entertainment industry. That's what I do. I understand that. Uh, I, you know, I, every week there's some Fakakta business plan. That's a, last week somebody sent me a business plan for a restaurant idea. Well, and yeah. and uh, every week people, you know, be, people know I've got money, and so they're now pitching me on their business uh, ideas. But the I, reality I, is, it, 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 unless you've got an idea for the radio business or theatrical entertainment or something, it, it, really, I'm not the right person to talk to. Okay. 
Um, could I give out a phone number to for no. people to contact me if they're interested? No, 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 get, get okay. no. We sell time to advertisers on the radio. We don't give that I, stuff out. I understand you're in, you're in business to sell advertising. That's advertising. that's my job. What if everybody yeah, else called it? What if, all? What about all the people who paid uh, you know nine hundred a thousand dollars a minute to run their commercial? What if they all or however much it is? I don't even know. What if they all heard me giving you a free commercial? I understand. I've been a long time listener. I know where you're coming from. I'm in the advertising business. Uh, you you can call our sales department, <laughs> Dave Severino at three two three nine seven one ninety seven one zero. Uh, you call Dave, and Dave will set you up uh, with a nice schedule. He's got a rate card. He's waiting to hear from you. Okay. Yeah, I'm working on getting backing for this, uh, and as soon as I do, I will contact you, and okay. I know you're going to be interested. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> it doesn't stop, Art. It doesn't stop. Now, the worst thing I ever did was let people know I've got money. Now the whole world is trying to get me involved in their crazy investment schemes. Yes, I've got a plan for those flaming embers. I'll give the guy $10,000. He's going to tell me, throw a bucket of water on it. <laughs> Do you know this is absolutely true? When I was a kid, my Uncle Ray used to bring me, I used to talk about this. My Uncle Ray worked in the Dead Letter Office. See the movie Miracle on 34th Street? And in it, there's a guy who works for the Dead Letter Office, and he sends all the letters to Santa Claus uh, to prove that it's Santa Claus in court. My Uncle Ray worked in the Dead Letter Office in New York City at the post office, and uh, he used to bring me undeliverable magazines, and one of the magazines was Popular Science. And uh, Popular Science in the back has classified ads. There was somebody who said in the ads of Popular Science, it said, learn how to keep your gas bill down, send $5, and it had a post office box. And when I was a kid, I thought I would be helping my parents out if I got this information, and I stupidly sent $5 to tell them how to keep the gas bill down, and, and I, I got a response. And do you know what it said? He said, here's how to keep your gas bill down. Place it on a flat surface and put a rock on it. So when these people call with these ideas for investments, I always think about that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Autumn on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I want to call you and tell you that I am a Tom Likas success story. You should know that about six months ago, I called you and I said, <clears throat> I've broken up with my boyfriend of six years. I'm doubting it. I think I've made a mistake. I think we're supposed to be together. And then, of course, I told you my age, and you were like, okay, listen, you are so wrong because I'm 23. And we all know, well, after listening to this show, 23, you don't know anything. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, anyway, we had a good conversation on the air, and I appreciate your feedback and your advice, but 23, so I didn't listen. So, I got back together with my boyfriend a couple of months ago, and here I am today, knowing well... Well, too much. I made a mistake. It's done and done. The guy is out of my life, and um, you called it. You were totally right, and I want you. And what, by the way, what was wrong with the guy? What was wrong with the relationship? He, um, <clears throat> well, we'd been together for six years. It wasn't, gonna, it wasn't going anywhere. He had no ambition or motivation to become an adult, and I said, well, sorry. Um, I kind of need you to do this with me, and if you can't go to work on a consistent basis and support yourself financially, it's just not going to work between us. I didn't want his money. I was fine by myself, but I wanted someone to, like, move forward in life with. Right. Which I don't think is asking a lot. Um, and so, you know, it was just basically like I I was moving forward and he wasn't joining me. And so it was, it was creating a lot of pressure on the relationship. And so I was just so stuck on the fact that, no, we're in love. We've been together for so long. And it's like I fell in love with him when, with him when I was 17. Like, that was, was crazy. I can laugh about it now, I, of course. Because <laughs> you were having sex with him, and it was the first time probably that you were having sex with a guy, and oh, it yeah. all felt like it was all hanging together. The sex was, like, maybe good for the first time. You were having a good time. Right. And so yeah, you thought that was a relationship. To me, yeah. I mean, when I, you know, at that age, at, at this age right now, I You felt that. really mature when you would go and stay at your boyfriend's house and... <laughs> Right? Oh, yeah. That's, I was a and, big girl. 
own. Right. But this is what I try to tell the 17-year-olds, the 18-year-olds, the 19-year-olds. <laughs> you're still trying to prove you're an adult. It yeah. doesn't mean you have all the smarts to do that kind of thing. Right. You, so I say that's why I tell people when you're 18, 19, well, just have sex. Well, no, I don't, you know, I'm pretty, that's like the one conservative thing about me. I think that that should be, you've got to keep something sacred in your life. And for me, that aspect of my life is, and, you know, of course, <clears throat> him being, you know. Well, you had sex with a loser, so I wouldn't call it sacred. No. Well, if I had known he'd, would he turn out to be such a loser, I wouldn't. No, but position. you know what? You, you uh, Guess what? If I met him, I could tell he was a loser, but you were so busy having sex with him, you, you wouldn't want to <laughs> hear it. That's true. I didn't want to hear it. I mean, if I did want to hear it, again, I wouldn't be here. Right. I, I, mean, I, just, I made my own decisions. It's funny how people, they look to, they look for advice and they go to their friends or people that they trust. But the truth is, unless you're willing to actually act on it and do something about it, you, you pretty much know the right thing to do. And you get to decide whether or not you want to, want to act on that. And, you know, I finally made the decision. I feel great about it, but it took six freaking years to get there. And now what you need to realize is that you don't want to move in concert with anybody because you can be dragged down or dragged back by people. You want yeah. to become successful in your own right, doing what you dream of doing, whatever that might be. And only then do you want to find somebody to have a relationship with. And at that point, you find somebody who's your equal. Yeah. But you see, if you haven't developed into what you're going to become, you're not capable of finding that person because you don't know what the other person's going to turn into, and it'll probably be something that clashes with what you're going to turn into. You're exactly right. I mean, I, I'm so, I'm so like, I feel so grateful and lucky to be only 23 in this position because I can't imagine for people when they wake up when they're 45 with kids with a mortgage in this situation. I'm so like thankful to whatever situation played out for this. Do you know what I mean? Like for, you know, you, Do know, you know how many letters like you've heard me read the letters from people uh, yeah. or how many people have called in and they tell me, oh, I'm of 33 of four kids. I don't know right. why I did this. I mean, yeah. I mean, do you have like a career path for yourself? Do you know what you want to do? I know. Yeah. I mean, uh, yes, I do. What is it? Um, you want know, me to tell me your my whole career path? <laughs> you know, short form. Well, no, it's it's important for me to graduate college and pursue um, a career in communications or sales and marketing. I know exactly what I want to do, and and to be honest with you, this guy um, that I was with, I was hesitant to complete what I really wanted because I didn't want to be better than the guy I was dating. Well, you see, so that's, that's how you know that's exactly the kind of thing that happens. Because I, I didn't want to break, I didn't want to be the person that brought home the money, or I want, you know what I mean? Like I wanted to be able to have a husband to provide for my family, and so I thought, okay, well, I've got to let him be better than I am. But it was just so horrible, and I just, you know. By the way, like, that's not unusual. I, there have been people throughout my family, including my extended family, <laughs> who would be afraid to be more successful than their parents. Fair. So they would never realize their dreams. They would never realize their potential because they were afraid that their parents wouldn't love them anymore or would be angry or feel jealous or hurt. Right. You can't worry about stuff like that, whether it's your friends, your family, your boyfriend. You shouldn't have a boyfriend. This is why. You yeah, need to use this time to become who you're going to become. And when you hit that, whatever you consider your goal of sales and marketing, I'd say hitting the six-figure level is probably a, a good dividing line. Only yeah. then should you be looking around for companionship that that is permanent or could be permanent. And at that time, you, you now that you've accomplished something and you know what you're going to be and who you are, you can now look for people like you. Yeah. No, I know. That's exactly right. And you know, the truth is, I know I'm so confident that when I really pursue exactly where I want to be and exactly what I want to do, I'm going to be around people that I want permanently in my life. No one is going to develop alongside you. Forget it. Yeah. That's a dream. It doesn't happen. Right. If only because people have their own ideas. And invariably, yeah. when you're 17, the guy who's the best in the sack is the biggest weed smoker or the biggest slacker or the biggest surfer or the biggest surfer who likes to smoke weed. He's yeah. the best guy in the sack.
Okay? And yeah. so that what you what what girls do is they get with these guys and they say, "Well, you know, you need to like develop along with me." And but the fact is the guy's good for what you're getting him for, smoking weed and and and, and getting into the sack. Right. But it's if you're looking for yeah. somebody who's successful in their own right, you need to wait until you become successful in your own right. Then you're going to go to, you know, lunches and dinners and conventions and events where you're going to meet your equals. Yeah, and that, that's what's exciting about this new world. Because I know, I mean, you know, there's definitely a fear that comes with ending a relationship with somebody that you've, you know, had for so long and gone through so many things with. It's, there's a fear there, and it's, you know, of being lonely or losing companionship. But what I am excited about is the world of opportunity that I'm, I'm in right now that I've opened up for myself by making the decision to move forward, you know, without him. And um, and it's, a, it's definitely a sense of empowerment that I have when I know I can do this, what? you know. And, and I just, I know, I'm talking to a 17-year-old right now who's listening to the show, and they know that they're in love, and they know they're going to go over to their boyfriend's house tonight and profess their love, 17-year-old love for them. I know that the, everyone's going to have to figure that out for themselves, but seriously, I encourage everybody to do it as soon as possible because it's yeah. great. Get out or just enjoy it for what it is. You're young. Yeah. You're having fun. Have sex with somebody. Don't move in with them. Don't start joint checking accounts with them. Don't buy no. cars with them. Don't co-sign their loans. Don't sign leases with people. Don't be yeah. making purchases with people. You know, living room sets, bedroom sets, credit furniture. Don't be doing that. Don't be buying cars. Don't make anybody else's car payments. Don't be helping people pay off their student loans. Don't be paying anybody's tuition to go to school. These are the stupid things I hear yeah. 18, 19, and 20 year olds doing i hear from guys whose girlfriend is in pre-law and yeah. they and they work at the gas station working double shifts to help pay the girlfriend's tuition the girlfriend who will dump them the minute they become an attorney i know it's so sad and that's why i say you, you, you can't be have your own place learn how to feel comfortable on your own learn how to go to bed at night by yourself Learn yeah. how to, learn how to deal with noises that happen late at night. Learn mm -hmm. learn how to pay your own bills. How to keep a checking account. Don't be counting on other people to develop with you or become something that you think they should become because they're never going to do it. In addition to that, it's just a matter. I feel pretty strongly that like you need to be somebody that you want to attract as well. And you're that's exactly what you're describing as far as. You know, being well, on your own. Well, first, you have to be own. something. Before you can do that, you have to be something. You have to be what yeah. you're going to be. You're not that yet. Right. You'll I'm be fine. that if you keep working at it. But right now, you're all you are is a blank canvas. Yeah. And so as the painting fills out a little more, until you're getting close to completion, it's too early to, to find yourself with a man who may have another agenda. And when you're 23 or your boyfriend is 24, his agenda, like, let's take me. I was in the radio business, and I wanted to succeed in the radio business. And I was dating a woman who was older than I was, and she, at 30 years old, wanted to settle down in a, in a condominium and buy leather furniture and uh, live in New York City for the rest of her life. And, and I said, wait a minute. Um, I, I may not get a job in radio in New York City. I will probably have to move to different cities and build up my portfolio of experience and develop an act. Uh, I can't commit to living in an apartment like that. And we went right. back and forth on this. The reality was I lived in eight different cities before I finally settled in Los Angeles 20 years ago. Yeah. And, and, and only then was I settled and only then did I know who I was and what I was going to become. Only then did I figured out, did I figure out that I would become a self-made multimillionaire? I never believed that or knew that was going to happen. Yeah. And so I, whoever I might have picked 25 or 30 years ago would be very different from somebody I would pick today. Yeah. That's, I mean, so why go through the pain? By the way, I've been through the pain. I've done what you did, and that's why I advise against it. I was married at 18. But I, I learned it the hard way. Why do that? Why do that when, when you can save all of the agony, all of the pain, all of the asking people to move out of your place and they don't want to move? All these people who call in all the time tell me their girlfriend won't leave and they want them to leave. Why go through all that? 
it's yeah, it's, it's not living. It's not living at all. It's pretty outrageous. Autumn, I'm proud of you. Thank you so much for the call. Like us. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I was just like that one guy that was waiting around for that one girl forever. And then it occurred to me why. There's tons and tons of girls out there. If one doesn't give it up to you, many more will. You know, you just got to find them and make it happen. Right. Why waste your time on one girl? It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood, 1-800-5800-TOM. Anything goes here, anything at all. Dean, hello. Hey, Tom. First time, long time. Yeah, Dean. Yeah, I was just calling because um, last night I got home and, uh, you know, I do my normal routine. I just sit down, watch some news, see what's going on in the world. And my wife says... uh, you're basically making me miserable and you're worthless and you don't help me with anything. And basically, she's like, well, I'm done. And uh, let me just give you a little background. You are how old? I'm 23. Why are you married? Let me give you a little background. Well, I'm basically from Johannesburg, South Africa. And And that's uh, why you're married? And, uh, well, what happened with uh, my status was... uh, was pending. I was waiting to get a student visa so I can actually attend uh, college. And it was taking such a long time that I was looking at a two-year wait. And uh, get my, I guess my wife just jumped up and she's like, well, let's just get married. And uh, seeing that that would speed up the process, and so I, I agreed to it. And first and foremost, let me say, I did say that I wanted a prenup to begin with. And I thought that, like you say, you always have something to lose. I thought I had nothing to lose. So I did not get a prenup. And it turns out she has $40,000 in debt from her student loans. Oh, there and, you go. No wonder she was so anxious to get married. Yeah, and I uh, guess we get to take half of that when we get married. Oh, hey, pal, I've been uh, warning you about that, but did you listen to me? No. No. I guess I deserve that. You part. thought you knew more than I did. I apparently don't. Oh, oh now did. now you figured that out, huh? I definitely did. And um, so what I'm looking at is uh, either, you know, just leaving um, and, or moving out, or I'm just kind of confused because it kind of caught me off guard, and I'm just kind of like... So you, you don't have your green card yet. I'm taking it. Actually, I do. Oh, then why, why do you need to say? Well, I mean, that that was not my purpose. I did not get to with her for that. I, I it's not the point. Like You've got it, and therefore it's not a consideration. What's keeping you there? Uh, I don't know. That's my point. If you can't answer that question, it's time to go. Definitely. So, where are you going to go? I Well, that's, that's another thing. I, I can either go back home. Uh, I just lined my ducks in a row, and I'm in, enrolled in, in, you know, in school, and I'm starting this fall. Why would you let what what's happening with her affect whether you go back or not? If you've got a green card and you've been accepted to a school and you've got a plan, stick to it. All right. I well, I'm gonna have forty thousand. I mean, twenty thousand dollars to pay. No, you're not, because did she go to school and incur that debt over the last year and a half? No, that was prior to our marriage. Well, then it's not your debt. You need to talk to an attorney. I was under the impression that I have I have to assume. I, again, I am not an attorney, but I've been divorced four times. And my understanding of community property is if that was her debt before you got married to her, unless you signed paperwork that said, I'm taking on half this debt, it's not yours. See, that, that changes everything. You see, you see, you all you're responsible for is what was incurred during the marriage, and and as far as splitting income, it's only what you earned while you were together, married. Right. So if she incurred that debt before you were married, you don't owe a penny. I was under the impression that I have to assume half of that. Why? Why wouldn't you talk to an attorney? 
Because this all just happened last night, so I'm kind of in Talk to an attorney immediately. The Tom Likas Show.